I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and these were the best stories to appear on Chasing Cars this week. First cab off the rank this week was all about the 300 series Toyota Land Cruiser. We road tested it this week at the Land Cruiser Club of New South Wales. Nathan Ponchard did that test for us. He gave the car an eight out of 10 and was a big fan of the GR Sport. You can catch the video here on the YouTube channel. Very detailed road test over on the website, plus a whole slate of coverage about the Australian development of this large four-wheel drive. Big problem with the car though, is the wait lists, which are currently enormous. If you put your name down today for a Land Cruiser, best case scenario is gonna be the end of the first quarter of 2022, possibly further into the distance than that. But what if the new Toyota Land Cruiser just isn't luxurious enough for you? Well, Lexus have got a product that'll be right up your alley with Toyota's luxury division announcing the LX600 petrol and LX500D diesel yesterday. And we've got stories on those cars over on the website. The next generation Subaru LeVorg was unveiled just before the pandemic at the Tokyo Motor Show. And it's coming to Australia next year after a lengthy delay badged as the WRX Sportswagon. It's a return to WRX branding for a sporty Subaru hatchback or wagon, however you perceive this particular car. This time around, it packs more grunt. The new 2.4 litre turbo boxer engine from the WRX. Power and torque don't change that much compared to the outgoing two litre LeVorg, but apparently this engine does make quite a bit more grunt perceptibly lower in the rev range. So it should make the new WRX Sportswagon a better drive than the old LeVorg. Only one hang up is that with the WRX Sportswagon, you have to take the Subaru Performance Transmission, which is the CVT. You can't get the manual like you can in the sedan. Our Chasing Cars artists were working overtime this week on a set of really cool renders on two products on the horizon for us here in Australia. The first is the new Ford Everest. There will be another Everest. It's gonna look a lot cooler than the outgoing version. The downside to this wagon is because we are getting a new Everest, we're not getting the Bronco. Ford Australia have now comprehensively ruled out the Bronco. It won't be coming to our market. And that's because Ford's resourcing and development center in Melbourne has again been the home room for the development of the Everest. So Ford is spending a lot of money developing and Everest out of Australia, so they're not gonna come and let the Bronco cannibalize sales of that vehicle. That being said, it should be a better car this time around, building on a refined version of the same underpinnings, and the exterior design, which we've imagined here based on extensive leaks and spy photography, looks pretty cool. Second up on our render list this week was a new Kia Ute. We know that there's one in the works. Same thing with sister brand Hyundai. There is a new Hyundai Santa Cruz that's come out in America, basically a Ute version of the Tucson midsize SUV. Hyundai ruled out that vehicle for Australia. Kia aren't interested in rebranding it as their own vehicle either. And that's because these companies reckon you need a pretty serious dual cab to compete with the likes of the Hilux and the Ranger here in Australia. Why is that? Because buyers seem to prefer frame vehicles in this segment rather than a monocoque chassis because, you know, the articulation is better, the off-roading capability is better. Even though many never tap into this capability, it's all about knowing it's there if you needed it. In response to all of our Mazda stories last week, many of you asked about a new rear-wheel drive Mazda 6 sedan and wagon. Now, we think it's unlikely that the company will do another station wagon. We hope to be surprised. They do direct quite a lot of resources into thinking about what the European market wants, and there are still some European countries that buy plenty of wagons and of course we love them here. I do think a new rear wheel drive Mazda 6 sedan is likely running the same large product architecture platform as the new CX-60 through CX-90 large SUVs. Because the Mazda 6 is mainly directed to America, that means that petrol six cylinder engines will be likely, probably a standard naturally aspirated Skyactiv X petrol six optional turbocharger, maybe an optional plug-in hybrid. That's the strategy for the six cylinder Mazdas that are going to America. So if we take the six, that's probably what we would get here in Australia as well. What do you think of that? Let me know down below. As always, we had heaps of great content published over at chasingcars.com.au this week. If you haven't checked out our website, I really encourage you to do so. I think it's genuinely just a really good car site with a fresh design, easy to navigate, and we've got all of our talented riders working over there, 
every day on site, churning out the content that we know you love. Also, heaps of road tests up on site this week. They just give you a bit of an extra dimension, more detail over we put up on YouTube as well. Plus, we've got an email newsletter that goes out monthly. So check that out if you haven't done so already. What would you like to hear about next week? Let me know down below this video or your thoughts on anything I've mentioned today. While you're there, make sure to hit subscribe, help us out, closing that gap to 100K. And as always, thanks for watching Chasing Cars. Mm -hmm.